1962, the Beverly Hillbillies made its debut on television screens across America. Audiences found themselves captivated by the misadventures of the Clampett family, who struck oil and moved to Beverly Hills. However, the scene backstage told a different story. While viewers saw hilarity and enjoyment, those working behind the curtains experienced less lively circumstances. This classic TV series, which remained popular throughout its nine-season run, hid complexities beneath its light-hearted exterior, delve deeper into the intriguing world of this iconic show, and discover what truly happened behind closed doors. Nancy Culp and Buddy Ebsen, who played the roles of Jane Hathaway and Jed Clampett on The Beverly Hillbillies, were often at odds behind the scenes. Despite their on-screen chemistry and the appearance of a happy family, the two actors had a strained relationship. Culp, a well-educated woman with a degree in economics, was known for her professionalism and dedication to her craft. Ebsen, on the other hand, was a laid-back actor who preferred a more relaxed approach to his work. This difference in work ethic and personality led to frequent clashes between the two. Culp was also known for being outspoken about her political beliefs, which often put her at odds with the show's conservative writers and producers. She was a strong supporter of the Democratic Party and was not afraid to voice her opinions, even if it meant ruffling a few feathers. Ebsen, who was a Republican, was often caught in the middle of these political debates. While he did not always agree with Culp's views, he respected her right to express them. However, this did not stop the tension between the two from growing. Despite the behind-the-scenes chaos, The Beverly Hillbillies was a wildly popular show that ran for nine seasons and produced over 270 episodes. The show's success can be attributed to its unique blend of humor, heart, and social commentary. The show's portrayal of the Clampett family, a group of rural Southerners who strike it rich and move to Beverly Hills, was both hilarious and insightful. It poked fun at the cultural divide between rural and urban America, while also highlighting the universal themes of family, love, and the pursuit of the American dream. In the end, the behind-the-scenes conflict between Culp and Ebsen only added to the show's mystique. It showed that even in the midst of chaos and conflict, great art can still be created and the Beverly Hillbillies will always be remembered as a classic example of this. In the classic television series, The Beverly Hillbillies, Granny's chair played a significant role in the Clampett family's adventures. The chair was often fastened to the back of their vehicle, with Jethro behind the wheel, ensuring Granny's comfort and familiarity as they navigated their new life in Beverly Hills. Cousin Pearl, who made occasional appearances on the show, also had a notable presence through her car. Although it is lesser known, Cousin Pearl was the owner of the vehicle, which became a familiar sight in the series. One of the most memorable cast members of the Beverly Hillbillies was Nancy Culp, who played the role of Miss Jane Hathaway. After nine years on the show, Culp decided to pursue a different path and left the series to embark on a political career. Throughout her time on the show, Culp's portrayal of Miss Jane Hathaway left a lasting impression on audiences, and her decision to leave the world of acting for politics was a bold, an intriguing move. Her political aspirations added another layer of depth to her multifaceted career, further solidifying her place in television history. While Granny's chair and Cousin Pearl's car were integral parts of the Beverly Hillbillies, Nancy Culp's political career after the show added a fascinating chapter to the series' legacy. The enduring appeal of this classic television show continues to captivate audiences, and the stories of Granny's chair, Cousin Pearl's car, and Nancy Culp's political career remain an interesting facet of its lasting impact. Paul Henning, the creator of the popular 1962 B-series The Beverly Hillbillies, made a significant investment of 500 to film the pilot episode at a Bel Air mansion. This mansion, known as the Kirby Mansion, was later sold to Jerry Parencio after the show's run ended. The filming location became an essential part of the show's charm and success. Henning's creation told the story of a poor family from the Ozarks who struck oil and moved to Beverly Hills, where they encountered a culture clash with the wealthy elite. The show's humor and relatability made it a hit among audiences. However, behind the scenes, tensions arose between two of the show's cast members, Buddy Ebsen and Nancy Culp. Ebsen, who played the family patriarch, disagreed with Culp's political views and reportedly undermined her campaign for a congressional seat in Pennsylvania while she was still acting on the show. Despite the conflict, the show continued to air for nine seasons and remains a classic example of 1960s television. Its memorable theme song and iconic characters have left a lasting impact on popular culture.
Culp's political aspirations and Ebsen's opposition to them added an unexpected layer of complexity to the show's production. However, the show's enduring popularity and cultural significance have overshadowed any behind-the-scenes drama. In the end, The Beverly Hillbillies remains a beloved piece of television history, with its unique blend of humor, satire, and cultural commentary continuing to resonate with audiences today. In the popular 1962 TV series The Beverly Hillbillies, Sharon Tate made a notable appearance wearing a brunette wig to disguise her identity. The show became a significant success, propelling its performers to stardom and generating over 100 million. Among the cast was Raymond Bailey, who portrayed the character of Mr. Drysdale. Bailey's performance was remarkable, but he started showing signs of Alzheimer's disease during the last two seasons, which affected his acting. Sharon Tate's appearance on the Beverly Hillbillies was a well-kept secret, as she wore a brunette wig to conceal her true identity. The show's success was phenomenal, earning more than $100 million and making its performers household names. Raymond Bailey, who played the role of Mr. Drysdale, was an essential part of the show's success. However, in the last two seasons, Bailey began to show signs of Alzheimer's disease, which affected his performance. Despite this, the show remained a fan favorite, and Bailey's character remained a beloved figure. In summary, The Beverly Hillbillies was a significant success, earning over $100 million and making its performers into stars. Sharon Tate's appearance on the show, disguised by a brunette wig, was a well-kept secret. Raymond Bailey, who played Mr. Drysdale, showed signs of Alzheimer's disease in the last two seasons, which affected his performance. In the 1962 B series The Beverly Hillbillies, Max Baer Jr. played the iconic role of Jethro Bodine, the lovable, slow-witted nephew of the Clampett family. However, few people know that Baer Jr. also portrayed Jethro Bodine, Jethro's twin sister, in several episodes. Baer Jr.'s portrayal of both characters added a unique layer to the show, as he skillfully depicted the contrasting personalities of the twins. Interestingly, Bear Jr. later sued CBS over the unauthorized use of his name by a restaurant chain. The lawsuit highlighted the importance of protecting one's identity and personal brand, even in the entertainment industry. Unfortunately, the Beverly Hillbillies had its share of controversies. One scandal involved Sonny, who was incorrectly identified as a Dale in some episodes. This mistake, while seemingly minor, highlights the care that should be taken to ensure accuracy and respect for all individuals involved in a production. In summary, The Beverly Hillbillies was a classic TV series that featured Max Baer Jr.'s memorable portrayal of Jethro Bodine and, to a lesser known extent, Jethro Bodine. The show also had its share of legal and identity-related issues, which serve as a reminder of the complexities that can arise in the entertainment industry. The Beverly Hillbillies, a classic TV series that aired in 1962, is remembered for its inclusion of various animals on set. A full-time trainer was always present to take care of the animals and ensure the safety of the cast and crew. The show featured a wide range of animals, from dogs and cats to horses and birds, adding a unique charm to the series. Kellogg's, a well-known brand, was a major sponsor of the Beverly Hillbillies. Product placement was a common occurrence in the show, with characters often seen enjoying Kellogg's cereals and other products. This sponsorship was a significant one, as it helped to fund the production of the series and increase its visibility among audiences. Max Baer Jr., who played the role of Jethro Bodine, had a real name that contrasted with his character's name. His full name was Maximilian Adalbert Baer Jr., which was quite a mouthful compared to the simpler name of his character. This contrast between his real name and his character's name added an interesting layer to his portrayal of Jethro Bodine. In conclusion, The Beverly Hillbillies was a classic TV series that featured a variety of animals on set, with a full-time trainer present to ensure their safety. Kellogg's was a major sponsor of the show, with product placement adding to the production's funding. Max Baer Jr., who played Jethro Bodine, had a real name that contrasted with his character's name, adding an intriguing layer to his performance. In 1962, the TV series made waves with its catchy theme song, The Ballad of Jed Clampett, which reached number 44 on the Billboard Hot 100. Irene Ryan landed the role of Granny Moses over Babe Benad due to her look, adding her own charm to the show. Buddy Ebsen's role in Breakfast at Tiffany's led to his casting as Jed Clampett, bringing his unique talent to the forefront of this classic. Before taking on the role of Jed Clampett in The Beverly Hillbillies, Buddy Epson had already enjoyed a long career in entertainment and was considering retirement. 
However, his casting as the patriarch of the Hillbilly family brought him renewed fame and cemented his place in television history. Interestingly, the character of Ellie Mae, played by Donna Douglas, had an unexpected impact on fashion trends off-screen. Her casual style, which often included wearing blue jeans, led to a surge in denim sales during the show's run. Even clothing giant Levi Strauss took notice, acknowledging the influence of the character on their profits. Initially, the show was set to be titled The Hillbillies of Beverly Hills. Still, producers eventually decided to shorten it to simply The Beverly Hillbillies, perhaps finding the latter more catchy and memorable. Despite these minor changes behind the scenes, the show became one of the most popular and beloved sitcoms of its time, delighting audiences with its humor and down-home charm. In the 1962 TV series The Beverly Hillbillies, there were several notable events and appearances. For instance, the famous actor John Wayne made a cameo in the show's fifth season. Interestingly, Wayne was not paid in cash for his appearance, but rather received a fifth of bourbon as compensation. Max Baer Jr., who played Jethro Bodine in the series, is the only surviving cast member to this day. Baer Jr. holds the sublicensing rights for themed casinos and restaurants related to the show, which speaks to the enduring popularity of the Beverly Hillbillies. Before joining the cast of the Beverly Hillbillies, Buddy and Vilma Ebsen had already made a name for themselves in Los Angeles. The siblings arrived in the city in 1936 and took on various roles in the entertainment industry. Buddy was a dancer and actor, while Vilma was a dancer and singer. Their experience and talent no doubt contributed to the success of the Beverly Hillbillies. Despite the passage of time, the impact of the Beverly Hillbillies can still be felt today. The show's memorable characters and catchy theme song have made it a classic in the world of television. Its influence can be seen in various forms of media, from modern TV shows and movies to themed restaurants and casinos. The iconic vehicle in the Beverly Hillbillies was a 1921 Oldsmobile Roadster truck, which became a symbol of the show's success and was eventually sent to a museum. The man behind the character who drove this truck, Buddy Ebsen, had an interesting career before his role as Jed Clampett. Before the Beverly Hillbillies, Ebsen worked with famous stars like Judy Garland and Shirley Temple. In fact, he was initially cast as the Scarecrow in The Wizard of Oz, but was replaced due to a reaction to the aluminum dust in his makeup. Ebsen's talents extended beyond acting. He was known for his skills in dancing and singing country music. His charm and charisma on screen, combined with his musical abilities, made him a perfect fit for the role of Jed Clampett in The Beverly Hillbillies. In this classic TV series, Epson's character, Jed, strikes it rich and moves his family to Beverly Hills, leading to a culture clash with the wealthy residents. The show's humor and relatable characters made it a hit with audiences, and it remains a beloved part of television history. Donna Douglas, the actress who played the lovable Ellie Mae Clampett on The Beverly Hillbillies, had an interesting background before becoming a household name. Prior to her role on the show, she was a beauty queen, having been crowned Miss New Orleans. The Beverly Hillbillies was a TV series that became a hit after just three weeks on air, quickly rising to the top of the ratings. The show followed the Clampett family, who struck it rich after finding oil on their land, and moved to Beverly Hills. Despite its initial success, CBS decided to cancel the show in 1971, believing that it had lost its charm. The show's early success can be attributed to its unique blend of humor and heart, as well as its talented cast. Donna Douglas's portrayal of Ellie Mae, the lovable and naive daughter of the Clampett family, was a fan favorite. Her performance, along with those of the other cast members, helped to make the show a beloved classic. Despite its cancellation, The Beverly Hillbillies remains a popular and enduring TV series, with many fans continuing to enjoy its humor and charm to this day. The show's impact can still be felt, as it has left a lasting legacy in the world of television. In 1993, a film spin-off of the popular TV series The Beverly Hillbillies was released, but it didn't receive positive reviews. This film failed to capture the charm of the original series, and has since been regarded as one of the worst productions. During the time when The Beverly Hillbillies aired on television, two of its actors, Max Baer Jr., who played Jethro, and Sharon Tate, who had a recurring role as Janet Trigo, formed a close bond off-screen. Their friendship bloomed amidst the light-hearted atmosphere of making this classic comedy. Sharon Tate, known for her radiant beauty and talent, later became a tragic victim of the infamous Manson family murders in 1969. Her senseless death cast a dark cloud over the otherwise jovial memories associated with the Beverly Hillbillies. 
To this day, the terrible event remains connected to the series due to their unforgettable collaboration. In 1962, the Beverly Hillbillies made its television debut, bringing laughter into American homes. This classic follows the Clampett family, who strike oil on their land in the hills of Tennessee and move to Beverly Hills, California, for a more luxurious life. The story revolves around Jed Clampett, the kind-hearted patriarch, his daughter Ellie May, known for her love of animals, and grandsons Jethro and Jetty Bodine. They encounter various cultural clashes while adjusting to their newfound wealth and high society living. Their country charm contrasts starkly with the extravagance surrounding them. CBS broadcasted this popular sitcom until 1971, airing a total of 274 episodes filled with humor and heartwarming moments. Among numerous accolades, the Beverly Hillbillies received four Emmy nominations during its nine-season run. To this day, it remains one of the longest-running shows based on a single theme, solidifying its place in television history. The Beverly Hillbillies, a popular 1962 TV series, had a unique casting process. The show's producers, Paul Henning and Roy Huggins, were on the lookout for actors who could bring the Hillbilly clan to life. Buddy Epson, a seasoned actor, was cast as Jed Clampett, the patriarch of the family. Epson's down-to-earth charm and natural comedic timing made him an ideal fit for the role. Jed's daughter, Ellie Mae, was played by Donna Douglas. Douglas, a former beauty queen, was chosen for her fresh-faced beauty and ability to portray a naive yet lovable character. Max Bear Jr., the son of a famous boxer, was cast as Jed's son-in-law, Jethro Bodine. Bear's comedic timing and physical comedy skills were a perfect match for the role. The final piece of the casting puzzle was Irene Ryan as Jed's mother-in-law, Granny. Ryan, a seasoned vaudeville performer, brought a feisty spirit and sharp wit to the role, making her a fan favorite. The chemistry between the actors was evident from the start. During auditions, they played off each other well, creating a believable and entertaining family dynamic. One pivotal moment in the casting process was the reading of the theme song. The actors' voices blended perfectly, creating a memorable and catchy tune that would become synonymous with the show. In the end, the casting of the Beverly Hillbillies proved to be a winning combination. The actors' chemistry, comedic timing, and natural charm brought the Hillbilly clan to life, making the show a beloved classic. The Beverly Hillbillies, a 1962 TV series, was brought to life by director Paul Henning. Henning's approach to storytelling was shaped by his rural upbringing, which he used to infuse humor and authenticity into the show. His creative influences included classic American folktales and the vaudeville tradition, blending physical comedy with witty dialogue. Henning's directorial style was characterized by his ability to balance slapstick humor with heartfelt moments. He achieved this by creating a warm, collaborative environment on set. Henning worked closely with the cast and crew, encouraging improvisation and input from all involved. This approach allowed the actors to fully embody their characters, resulting in memorable performances that resonated with audiences. One of Henning's key collaborators was actor Buddy Ebsen, who played the show's patriarch, Jed Clampett. Ebsen's natural charm and comedic timing made him the perfect fit for the role. Henning and Ebsen developed a strong working relationship, with Henning often tailoring scenes to showcase Ebsen's unique talents. Henning's vision for the Beverly Hillbillies was to create a show that celebrated the simple pleasures of rural life while poking fun at the excesses of high society. This theme was reflected in the show's iconic opening sequence, which featured the Clampett family striking oil and moving to Beverly Hills. The contrast between the family's humble beginnings and their newfound wealth was a source of endless humor and social commentary. In addition to his work on the Beverly Hillbillies, Henning also created two other successful TV series Petticoat Junction and Green Acres. These shows, like the Beverly Hillbillies, showcased Henning's ability to blend humor and social commentary in a way that resonated with audiences. In conclusion, Paul Henning's directorial vision was instrumental in bringing the Beverly Hillbillies to life. His creative influences, directorial style, and collaborative approach to working with the cast and crew helped to create a show that has endured as a classic of American television. The Beverly Hillbillies, a popular 1962 TV series, brought the Ozarks to Beverly Hills with its unique blend of humor and culture clash. The production faced various challenges, especially in set design and filming locations. The show's main setting, the Clampett Mansion, was a marvel of set design. 
Constructed on a soundstage, it combined a rustic cabin feel with lavish Beverly Hills decor, reflecting the fish-out-of-water theme. Art directors and set decorators filled the mansion with a mix of authentic antiques and faux-age pieces to maintain the illusion. As for filming locations, the show primarily used the 20th Century Fox Studios in Los Angeles. However, exterior shots of the Clampett Mansion were filmed at the iconic Chartwell Mansion in Beverly Hills. This location provided the perfect backdrop for the juxtaposition of the rural Clampets and the glamorous Beverly Hills lifestyle. Logistical challenges arose from filming a sitcom with such a large cast and numerous set pieces. The production team had to carefully schedule scenes and manage the set to ensure smooth filming. They also had to accommodate the unique comedic style of each actor, which required careful direction and editing. In terms of innovative techniques, The Beverly Hillbillies was one of the first TV shows to employ a live audience for filming. This approach added to the show's energy and helped guide the actors' performances. The laughter from the audience often influenced the pacing and delivery of jokes, contributing to the show's unique comedic style. Despite the challenges, the Beverly Hillbillies became an enduring symbol of 1960s television. Its blend of humor, culture clash, and innovative filming techniques continues to resonate with audiences today. The Beverly Hillbills, a popular 1962 TV series, offers a unique blend of comedy and culture clash, all set to a lively musical backdrop. The show's creators understood the importance of music in setting the mood and enhancing the storyline. They enlisted the help of talented composers and musicians to create a memorable score and soundtrack. One key figure was Led Gleskin, the experienced music director who worked on numerous television shows and films. He led a team of skilled composers and arrangers to craft a score that captured the spirit of the series. The music ranged from bluegrass and country tunes, reflecting the hillbilly roots of the Clampett family, to more sophisticated pieces for the wealthy California socialites they encounter. The opening theme song, The Ballad of Jed Clampett, became an instant classic. Composed by Paul Henning, the show's creator, and sung by Jerry Scoggins, it introduced viewers to the main character and foreshadowed his newfound fortune. This catchy tune remained a staple throughout the series' run, contributing significantly to its popularity. Musicians like Billy Strange and Glenn Campbell played instrumental roles in creating the soundtrack. Their guitar skills brought authenticity to the country numbers, while their versatility allowed them to adapt to different styles needed for various episodes. For instance, when the plot required upbeat party music or elegant waltzes, these musicians delivered. Moreover, the music did not merely serve as background noise, but actively enhanced the narrative and emotional tone of each episode. Upbeat melodies punctuated moments of joy and celebration among the Clampett clan, whereas softer, slower tunes reflected introspection or sentimentality. In scenes where cultural misunderstandings occurred, contrasting musical themes underscored the humor derived from these situations. Overall, the collaboration between composers, musicians, and production staff resulted in a rich and diverse soundtrack that greatly contributed to the Beverly Hillbillies' charm and success. By combining elements of country, folk, and classical music, they successfully mirrored the show's central premise, a blending of disparate worlds through laughter and shared experiences. One of the most iconic scenes in the Beverly Hillbillies comes from the very first episode, when the Clampett family strikes oil on their land in the hills of Tennessee. This scene establishes the fish-out-of-water premise of the show and sets the tone for the rest of the series. The direction in the scene is masterful, with the camera panning out to reveal the gusher of oil shooting up into the sky. The performances are also top-notch, with each member of the Clampett family reacting in their own unique way to their newfound fortune. Buddy Ebsen, who plays patriarch Jed Clampett, perfectly captures the wonder and bewilderment of a man who has never seen so much money before. Cinematographer Harold Stein uses sweeping shots of the rolling hills and lush forests of Tennessee to contrast with the opulence of Beverly Hills, which the Clampets will soon call home. The juxtaposition between the two settings serves to highlight just how far removed the Clampets are from their humble beginnings. This scene had a profound impact on audiences, drawing them in with its mix of humor and drama. According to executive producer Paul Henning, we wanted to create a show that was both entertaining and relatable, something that would appeal to people from all walks of life. And appeal it did. The Beverly Hillbillies went on to become one of the most popular shows of the decade. Another memorable scene occurs later in the series, when the Clampets attend a fancy party at a ritzy hotel in Beverly Hills. 
Dressed in their hillbilly best, they stick out like sore thumbs among the wealthy elite, but rather than feeling intimidated, they embrace their differences and proceed to have a grand old time. Director Richard Horf expertly captures the awkwardness and hilarity of the situation, cutting back and forth between the stuffy guests and the boisterous clampets. The performances are once again stellar, with Irene Ryan's portrayal of Granny as particularly noteworthy. With her sharp wit and quick comebacks, she more than holds her own against the snooty socialites. Cinematographer Kenneth Peach makes clever use of lighting and color to further emphasize the divide between the two groups. While the guests are bathed in soft, warm tones, the clampets are lit in harsh, cool blues and greens. This visual contrast underscores the fact that, despite their different backgrounds, the clampets are every bit as deserving of respect and admiration as anyone else. According to actor Max Bear Jr., who played Jethro Bodine on the show, that scene really encapsulated what the Beverly Hillbillies was all about. We weren't making fun of people who were different, we were celebrating them. And I think that resonated with a lot of viewers. Indeed, the show's positive message of acceptance and inclusivity continues to inspire fans today. The Beverly Hillbillies, a 1962 TV series, brought laughter into American homes, resonating with audiences seeking a break from the realities of the time. The show followed the Clampets, a backwoods family who struck oil and moved to Beverly Hills, providing a humorous clash between rural and urban cultures. This series struck a chord with viewers, drawing in large audiences and becoming one of the top-rated shows during its run. The show's success lay in its ability to create humor from the juxtaposition of two different worlds, poking fun at both the hillbillies and the wealthy Beverly Hills residents. The Beverly Hillbillies significantly influenced pop culture, inspiring numerous parodies and references in other media. The show's theme song, The Ballad of Jed Clampett, became instantly recognizable and remains a part of American folklore. Moreover, the Clampett's distinctive fashion, such as Jed's bib overalls and Granny's bonnets, left an indelible mark on the visual language of comedy. Beyond entertainment, the Beverly Hillbillies contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. The show explored class differences, highlighting the gap between the rich and the poor. It also showcased the value of authenticity and simplicity in the face of material wealth and social status. Despite its seemingly lighthearted nature, the Beverly Hillbillies subtly challenged societal norms. By portraying a strong, independent, and self-sufficient woman in Granny, the show defied gender stereotypes of the time. It also presented a positive portrayal of rural America, countering urban-centric narratives that dominated popular media. In conclusion, the Beverly Hillbillies offered more than mere entertainment. It resonated with audiences, influenced pop culture, and contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. The show's enduring legacy continues to inspire and entertain, leaving a lasting impact on American television history. Upon its release in 1962, the Beverly Hillbillies quickly became a hit among audiences. The show followed the misadventures of the Clampett family after striking oil on their land and moving to Beverly Hills. While critics were divided, the show's popularity was undeniable. Some reviewers praised the humor and charm of the series. A critic from the New York Times wrote that it had a kind of crazy good nature about it. Similarly, Time Magazine noted that it has a certain sweetness, attributing its success to the appeal of seeing wealthy people taken down a peg. However, other critics panned the show as simplistic and unfunny. Jack Gould of the New York Times called it disappointingly labored, while Variety described it as having no pretensions beyond being just plain foolish. Despite mixed reviews, the Beverly Hillbillies proved to be a massive ratings winner. At its peak, it drew over 30 million viewers per week, making it one of the most popular shows of the decade. It also earned several award nominations, including two Primetime Emmy Award nods for Outstanding Comedy Series. For those involved in the production of The Beverly Hillbillies, its success meant job security and recognition in the industry. Star Buddy Epson earned three consecutive Golden Globe nominations for Best TV Star. Mail, while Paul Henning won the Writers Guild of America award for his work on the show. Overall, the critical reception and awards for the Beverly Hillbillies reflect the polarizing opinions surrounding the sitcom when it first aired. However, its lasting impact can still be felt today, demonstrating the power of relatable characters and broad comedic appeal. Did you know that the iconic mansion used in the Beverly Hillbillies was once a real-life home to several Hollywood stars? Before becoming the Clampett family's residence, the mansion was owned by millionaire hotelier, Harold Lloyd. 
It was later sold to another wealthy individual, Jerome Zerb, who transformed it into a lavish party spot. The show's creator, Paul Henning, drew inspiration for the series from his own experiences. Raised in a small town in Missouri, Henning moved to Beverly Hills and often felt out of place among the wealthy residents. This contrast between rural and urban lifestyles became the foundation for the Beverly Hillbillies. Buddy Ebsen, who played the lovable Jed Clampett, was initially hesitant to take on the role. He had just finished working on a serious film and didn't want to be typecast in comedic parts. However, after reading the script and meeting the cast, he changed his mind and embraced the character wholeheartedly. Beverly Hillbilly's theme song, The Ballad of Jed Clampett, was a massive hit, reaching number one on the Billboard charts. The catchy tune, written by Paul Henning and composed by Flat and Scruggs, remains popular to this day. Both on and off the set, the cast and crew formed a close-knit community. They often spent time together, enjoying meals and sharing stories. Irene Ryan, who played Granny, was known for her love of cooking and would frequently prepare meals for the cast and crew. Beverly Hillbilly's success led to a long-lasting impact on popular culture. The show introduced many Americans to the concept of upward mobility and the idea that anyone, regardless of their background, could achieve success in America. Beyond its cultural significance, the Beverly Hillbillies also had a lasting impact on the careers of its cast and crew. Many of the actors went on to star in other successful TV shows and films, while the show's creators and writers continued to produce popular content for years to come. In conclusion, the making of the Beverly Hillbillies was filled with fascinating behind-the-scenes stories and anecdotes. From the show's iconic mansion to the close-knit cast and crew, the Beverly Hillbillies remains a beloved an enduring piece of American television history. The Beverly Hillbillies, a 1962 TV series, left a significant mark on film history. This show, with its unique blend of humor and social commentary, proved that successful television could be made from unconventional ideas. The story of a backwoods family striking it rich and moving to Beverly Hills was a fresh concept that resonated with audiences. The series, created by Paul Henning, was a pioneer in its use of culture clash for comedic effect. It paved the way for future sitcoms that use similar themes, such as Green Acres and The Jeffersons. The Beverly Hillbillies also had a significant impact on the television industry, with its popularity leading to a surge in rural-themed shows. The series inspired a number of subsequent works. In 1993, a film adaptation was released, starring Cloris Leachman and Jim Varney. The show's theme song, The Ballad of Jed Clampett, became a pop culture staple and has been covered by various artists, including bluegrass legend Ralph Stanley. The Beverly Hillbillies also had a lasting influence on the way sitcoms were written and produced. The show's use of location shooting, combined with a studio audience, created a unique visual style that set it apart from other sitcoms of the time. The series also had a strong cast of characters, each with their own distinct personality, which helped to create a rich and diverse world within the show. In conclusion, The Beverly Hillbillies was a groundbreaking TV series that left a lasting legacy and influence on film history and future filmmaking. Its unique concept, memorable characters, and cultural impact continue to be felt today. Did you know that The Beverly Hillbillies first aired over 60 years ago? This classic TV show has left a lasting impression on many lives. We'd love to hear about your personal connections to this beloved series. How did the Clampett family's rise to wealth resonate with you? When it initially premiered in 1962, perhaps you found humor in their fish-out-of-water situation or connected with their struggle to adapt to a new lifestyle. No matter what drew you in, we want to encourage our community to share those special moments. Did this groundbreaking comedy influence your perception of television entertainment back then? Or maybe its themes still hold meaning for you today? By engaging through likes, shares, and subscribing for future discussions, we can create a space where reminiscing brings us closer together while celebrating the power of storytelling. We invite everyone to take a trip down memory lane and recall how the Beverly Hillbillies entertained, inspired, and even taught life lessons throughout various episodes. So go ahead, delve into your treasure trove of memories, who knows what gems await